What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for March 10th, 2024. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Welcome to a Sunday edition of the podcast. It's, but finally, the rain has stopped, and I saw some uh, 70 degrees on the horizon, so definitely enjoying that. But as always, let's start with a recap of yesterday's question of the day. I asked you, which sports playoffs are the most exciting? 60% of you said the NHL, and I can't say I disagree with you on that. There's just something that hits different about the NHL playoffs compared to the regular season. And I've watched more hockey this year than I've ever watched in the regular season. It's definitely a fun sport to watch, but it really is. And I think because it it's so wide open and you do have eight seeds making runs and things like that. Um, but... Thanks, as always, for participating in the question of the day. There will be another question later. 267-495-8531. Get you into the voice and text line. All right. It's time for the bubble watch. Um, I have a sound, but I couldn't figure out how to get it. So either way, Nova Men uh, lost yesterday 69-67 to Creighton. What a game, though. They got down big early in the first half, but showed a lot of resiliency and battled back. Um, tied it up and then just got beat with 0.2 seconds left. So it's, it's really hard to be be upset at that. Uh, but according to Joey Brackets, they're currently the first four out. They are the last team out of the tournament. So they need to win probably two games in the Big East tournament in order to get in. Uh, they start off Wednesday against DePaul, which should be uh, a, an easy win. DePaul is pretty terrible. Uh, and then they would have a matchup on Thursday against Marquette. Um, but they, there's still hope alive for, for the Nova men. Uh, but it's, like I said, they got to win two games. So they're going to have to beat DePaul and Marquette, I think. In, and this is just me speculating, I think, to get in. Um, but... They're going to have to sweat it out. Unfortunately, the Nova women are likely done. They lost to Marquette 50-48 to yesterday, pretty much ending their tournament uh, hopes. They are like the next four out. Um, so it, it's they're they're done. Temple women obviously play uh, Monday, tomorrow. They'll, they'll play. Uh, we'll have more on that once we figure out who they play uh, as the tournament progresses today. And then I guess there's not really an update on the Temple men's story. I know that I, I saw some people who were commenting on it who were saying that um, there's a lot of misconceptions and things like that. Um, uh, not I didn't take it necessarily as a direct attack at me, but uh, they were saying, well, people don't understand. Yeah, yeah, it was a bad line, but there was some suspicious movement. And, like, I'm agreeing with that. I'm just saying it was a bad line to start as well. Uh, but they are investigating it. Who knows what's going to come out of that. But they play uh, UT San Antonio today, finish up their regular season. Uh, I'm sure. Be interesting. I'm going to check the line and, and keep an eye on that as the day progresses. But uh, as they still are investigating that. But it's... Just a frustrating, frustrating time to be a Temple fan. And we're going to go a little out of order today, sticking with the Temple thing. Um, we're going to go back today to 2001, uh, back to really the, the glory days, I guess you could call it. Um, and on this day, Temple beat UMass 76-65 to at the Spectrum to win the Atlantic 10 Championship. And get into the tournament. They were not a tournament team, in le or they had to win the A10 tournament that year to get into the tournament. And it was one day after a miracle uh, in the semifinals against George Washington. I remember this well. Uh, Lynn Greer got fouled on a drew, did a nice job drawing a foul, uh, hit the three foul shots to give Temple the spot in the Atlantic 10 championship. Um, but this was the seventh or the twelfth straight year that John Chaney's teams had made the tournament. Seventeen of his first nineteen years under uh, the coach, they made the NCAA tournament. And honestly, this was his last one, which is kind of sad if you if you really think about it. This was sort of the beginning of the end for for Coach Chaney because that team was very inconsistent that year. Um, and again, they were lucky to get into the tournament. Um, Lynn Greer, Quincy Wadley each had 20 in that Atlantic 10 championship game, but they did go into the tournament as an 11 seed, 
pulled off the upset of Texas. They beat the three seed Florida. They beat Penn State before falling in the Elite Eight to Michigan State. One of John Chaney's most improbable runs, I would say, to the Elite Eight. Uh, because this team had no business really making it that far. But they got hot. Uh, I think the the A-10 championship was like their seventh straight win. So they got hot at the right time, which was a signature of John Chaney's team. But on this day in 2001, Temple beat UMass 76-65 to win the Atlantic 10 championship, get the automatic bid to the tournament, um, and then go on that magical run uh, in John Chaney's last tournament appearance. All right. Phillies news. Tawan Walker made his debut. Like I wasn't expecting that. Last I had saw, he was going to throw a bullpen session, but uh, he didn't do bad. Two innings pitch, uh, an earned run, and three strikeouts. Uh, and I, I still think he's going to be one of the keys. They're going to need him to be better than he was last year. And it, he wasn't that bad last year. Uh, it's just he faltered down the stretch and they didn't use him in the the playoffs so he's going to be another one of those keys Castellanos with a home run uh, Rojas went 0 for 3 um, but again according to Kevin Long he likes where he is he's close to putting it together so we shall see Brandon Marsh is still progressing well um, they're back in action today but I'm, I'm excited for for this season to start and we will be doing a Phillies preview on Back to the Future within the next week or so. So stay tuned for that. Best way to stay in, in the loop is to subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, Jimbo underscore Mott. And that's Back to the Future with a PH. Check out the interview I did with Brian Michael, the producer of A League Apart, the exhibit at Canvey County College on the legacy of the Negro Leagues and the Barrier Breakers. Great, great. Uh, he the, the interview was fun. Like I learned a lot, but the exhibit itself is great. So go check out both. That's Back to the Future with the PH, and make sure you're subscribing to the YouTube channel. Sixers in action tonight against the Knicks up in MSG. No Tyrese Maxey. And, I mean, at this point, they're all big games for the Sixers, but this is a team that – you're behind in the standings that you got to win. So hopefully they can put it together and Tobias can really step up when they, they need him the most. And I think the most part, they just need to be consistent. And I think that's the the issue. So Sixers in MSG to take on the Knicks tonight. Uh, Flyers. Whew. <clears throat> We were, we were riding high there after the win over the Panthers, but the Tampa Bay Lightning came out and just smacked them 7 to nothing. They gave up four goals in the first period. Sam Erson was benched. Tortorella was thrown out and then refused to leave at first. So just a one of those games where you just hope that nobody gets hurt. You've put it behind you and move on. But the Flyers lost 7 nothing to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Ugh. Yikes. Um, and then that's, again, again they're, all, they're all important at this point. But, man, not good for the confidence when you get beat that bad. But, again, I think it's just uh, let's put it behind us, move on, and see what we can do. The Union started to play and then got rained out. Uh, the game was suspended six minutes in. It will be rescheduled. No date has been set yet. <clears throat> all right, the big Eagles news yesterday. And this – does, I, I like this a lot, and I'm a big Brandon Graham, fran, Brandon Graham fan. Uh, obviously, I'm a Michigan guy, and um, just loved it when they drafted him. Loved that Chip Kelly re-signed him um, when he was. They were thinking about letting him walk, and just one of the all-time greats. But he signed a one-year, four million dollar extension to play his 15th year with the Eagles, which was a, a number that he always put out there that he wanted to do, and. Very glad that it's going to be with the Eagles because obviously he's not the player he was. He's not going to be a double-digit sack guy, but he does bring the, the leadership, uh, which they're going to need, and he can still get it done um, in, in part of a rotation. Um, but it's, it'll be a farewell tour for him. And like I said, one of the to me, one of the all-time greats for the Eagles um, – just a solid player. Obviously, he's going to be known for the strip sack in the Super Bowl. Uh, but just what he brings and just uh, he's just a fun guy, too. Like, he just seems like he's one of those guys that's, that's just fun. So his 15th year next year will be a record. It'll be the most seasons in franchise history, breaking Chuck Bednarik's record. 
Uh, so BG is coming back for one last year, 15 years, and see you later. Uh, but I, like I said, I, I'm excited about this. And this leads to today's question of the day. And it's kind of on the heels of the Jason Kelsey thing. It's uh, We're talking about Fletcher Cox likely retiring. But where does Brandon Graham rank in the Eagles' all-time grades? He's fourth on their sack list uh, behind, I think it was fourth. Yeah, uh, behind Reggie, Clyde, and Trent Cole. Um, so he has a chance to kind of move up there. And just, like I said, the probably other, like if it wasn't for, everybody's going to talk about Philly Philly, uh, the Philly special, but that strip sack, they, they had not gotten to Tom Brady at all in that game. And if it wasn't for that, I mean, there's, you know that Tom Brady was going to lead them down the field to score. So that play is probably, and I don't want to take anything away from the Philly special because Philly special probably is the best uh play in Super Bowl history, but Brandon Graham's strip sack has to be number two in Eagles history as far as plays. So where do you think Brandon Graham ranks all time on, on the Eagles rankings? Uh, is he an all time great? Should number 55 be retired? Um, let me know. 267-495-8531. Get you in. Let's have a Brandon Graham appreciation. Leave your thoughts on Brandon, your favorite memories. <clears throat> And where does he rank on the all-time greats list in Eagles history? 267-495-8531. Get you in. All right. Speaking of goats, Philly Goat, man. I'm telling you, like, what can I say that I haven't already said about them? Um, I, I think I'm adding uh, the Schmitties now to my, my list. I'm going to get three pairs of these shoes. But check out these canvas loafers. They're hot. Like They're just... They're ridiculous. Um, and get shirts to match and just pair them up. But I'm telling you, I'm getting the fans, the Schmitties, and the Cape Mays. Uh, go to phillygoat.com. Check it out for yourself. Uh, they have just a great selection of shirts, shoes, pants, whatever you need. Uh, they got you covered. Hats. So literally, you could wear a Philly Goat outfit and, and from head to toe. Uh, use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off your order at checkout. That's phillygoat.com. Promo code Jim Montgomery at checkout for 10% off. All right, finally today, we're going to finish up with our Philly Sports Women's History Month Spotlight. And today, we're going to talk about Dorothy Jermaine Porter, who is a Philly native and a golfer. Um, She started golfing at age 11 and went to college at Beaver College, which is now Arcadia, just right up the street from my house. Uh, She played field hockey at uh, Beaver College, but she was well known for a golfer. She won many junior and amateur championships throughout the 1940s. She won three Pennsylvania women amateur titles, uh, three women's Western amateurs. Uh, she was on the won the 1949 U.S. Women's Amateur title outright. She was a member of the Curtis Cup team that won in 1950. She captained the 1966 Curtis Cup team that also won. And then she just continued to golf as she got older. She won the senior women's amateur. She became the first uh, woman to win both the women's amateur and the senior women's amateur. Uh, She will go on to win the senior women's amateur four times. Uh, She won the Espirito Santo Trophy, which is the team championship in 1976. Uh, She's a member of the Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame. One of the, the best female golfers ever to come out of this region and Definitely somebody you probably didn't hear hear of before, uh, but just a phenomenal amateur golfer. Um, Shout out to you, Dorothy Jermaine Porter. Today's Philly Sports Women's History Month Spotlight. Uh, And with the weather, like it's got me like doing a golfer today with the weather coming up this week. I'm ready to get out and and, and hit. Um, But shout out to you, Dorothy Jermaine Porter. Today's Philly Sports Women's History Month Spotlight of the Day. On this day in 2001, the Temple men's basketball team beat UMass 76-65 to win the Atlantic 10 championship and go to the NCAA tournament for the last time in John Chaney's career. Had that magical run to the Elite Eight when they met up and lost to ultimately Michigan State. Uh, let me know what you think. So, what you think about BG 267-495-8531? Where does he rank on the all-time greats? hopefully Tobias and somebody can step up tonight. It's a big game for the Sixers. The Knicks can be beat, uh, so we'll see what happens there. But 
Go enjoy this weather out there. It looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. A little cloudy, but that's okay. It's not raining. So go have yourselves a Sunday. This has been This Day in Philly Sports History. I'm Jim Montgomery. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you.